Hey, we've got the first new printer of 2020. Does it hit the mark? Stay tuned. We're jumping in right now. Hey, welcome to the first layer. My name is Richard. This is the show that explores the world of 3D printing. On today's show, we are talking about a brand new printer for 2020. It's the Anycubic Mega Zero. Hey, listen, if you're new here, go ahead, hit that subscribe button and also ding that little bell so you get notified every time that we do a brand new episode so you're sure not to miss a thing. Let's jump into our review of the Anycubic Mega Zero. So here we have the Anycubic Mega Zero. What are you going to do? <laughs> it is a Cartesian based machine. It is targeted to people that are just coming into the hobby, um, people that are brand new to the hobby, as I said. Uh, so if you're looking for a sub $200 printer, this might be one to take a look at. It hasn't yet been released online. So this is a pre unit, pre order unit. Um, or pre-release unit as it's commonly known. Some of the things about this printer that I think are great, some of the things about this printer I don't think are so hot. Um, it was very easy to put together. The whole bottom carriage, just like most of the other Cartesian Ender 3 style printers that are on the market today, come with the bottom already assembled so you don't have to muck around trying to get all the screws in the right spots. But you do have to put together the upper frame. Um, and also uh, make sure that everything goes on correctly. There are some adjustment screws uh, or eccentric spacers for the wheels, just like you'd find on any other printer of this uh, nature. Now, let's uh, zoom in on it. I'm gonna show you some of the features that I, I like and some things that uh, I think they could do better. All right, so here we are looking at the uh, Mega Zero, and you can see we've got some prints on here that were done on the Mega Zero with any cubics red PLA filament, which uh, we'll talk about in a minute. But you can see it's got a very low profile um, control panel. So it's easy to see the screen. Again, it's similar to all the others, but the control box is very small. You can see there that it's only a couple of inches tall. It does use a micro SD, your power switch is right here, and it uses a brick as opposed to a standard power supply to power the unit. Now, one of the things that I really liked about this, so their extruder system on this machine is actually pretty cool. It's very similar to a Titan extruder. It is not a Titan, it's a Titan clone. But one of the things that I did like about it is they have a set of, or a little piece of PTFE tube running into the extruder. Now, the reason that that's important is so that your filament, because it's placed on top of the machine, doesn't come down and wear into the plastic like it's done so many times on the Ender 3. So to me, this is a definite plus. And with this extruder, you can put TPU through it. Um, there is a profile that comes with the 3D printer that will allow you to uh, add it to your Cura profile and be able to print TPU. Now, one of the other things I liked about this, okay, so the hot end is very similarly designed uh, to you know all of the other build class printers in this class. Um, what makes this a little different is the fact that this hot end is designed to throw TPU through it. So inside the internal mechanism of this hot end, it's an any cubic hot end. So they're usually pretty good. They're not as, as I hate to say this, but as crappy as the Creality ones and those that are copying the Creality ones. But again, it's very easy to open up. So just a couple of screws there and you can open it up. These two um, pieces that you see on this side, I think I can get a better look at it. You'll notice that on here, the limit switch is actually on the extruder or on the uh, hot end side of things and not on the end. So when it comes over, you're guaranteed to hit it every time and not miss it, especially if you do upgrades. Now, one thing that could cause a problem for you is doing a BL touch on this. There might be a, a different way that you can do a BL touch, um, but because the limit switch is here, it prevents you from putting a BL touch on this side of the machine. It does come with a standard 40 millimeter by 10 millimeter fan here. Um, it also comes with a 4010 blower fan on the side. So we can see that here. So we've got the, uh, the 10 by 40 blower fan. The way they've done the duct is a little different underneath. We can get a clear shot right here. You can see that it actually slopes back before it actually starts pushing air out. 
unlike the one that is on the Creality. So I found this to be actually quite good during my print tests. So here at the rail section, here on the bed, you'll notice they've gone with uh, cylindrical rods, which was very common on a lot of older 3D printers. Uh, even Prusa used these for a number of years. Now people have started to go to the extrusion and wheel combination. Um, so I think this was kind of a step backwards. Although it does work, their rails are straight, it slides nice. You know, there's, there's no bottoming out. Sometimes I still think that the old ways are the best ways. And this certainly proves my point because this will definitely get you where you want to go and it stays straight because they've done a really good job of mounting this all together for you so you don't have to do anything. Now, the center uh, tensioning wheel here on the Y-axis, you can actually loosen these two screws and move it out or in as you need to because over time, you know, belts get a little bit weak and uh, you may want to change the belt to something a little bit better and you can tension it a little bit, right, by just loosening up these two screws. All right, so now we're going to look at the build quality or the print quality of this machine. Okay, so this is the sample file that comes on the uh, SD card. It comes with an 8 gigabyte SD card. Most people nowadays are using an 8 gigabyte. Uh, I would have liked to have seen a little bit bigger one, but uh, we'll talk about that at another time. But the print quality on the file that they sliced is really, really good. Now, they include this profile so that you can add it to your current version of Cura. There's nothing wrong with that print whatsoever. Now, in contrast, I used the same settings or the same profile to do our next one, which is this little guy. And to the naked eye, you can't see any, any real flaws in it. We get a little bit of light there. You can start to see some of the flaws. And if we turn it to the side here, you can really start to see, um, especially down the, the side here, that where it was starting and stopping, trying to figure out where uh, it was going to uh, put its seam. So that was one thing. And there's a little bit of ghosting on the back side of this arm here that you can see, but not a whole lot. Other than that, this was okay. It had a little bit of an overhang issue because we did print this one uh, at 200% scale. This is uh, a little bit bigger than the, than the robot that uh, you would normally print. Uh, but you could still put it on a keychain. See, it's still got its little thing there at the top, so you can still put it on a keychain. Um, I think it's nice and crisp in terms of the way that it looks. You can see all the detail on it. Um, where this thing typically fails is right down here at the hands. Um, these hands here, typically this little claw piece ends up not coming out in a print, especially when they're smaller. Now you're going to notice there's some white residue on the bottom. We'll talk about that in a few minutes when we address the build plate. So after I did this one, I decided, well, I'm going to put in my own profile. And here's what I got from my own profile. So there's the top of an XYZ cube. There's the X. Not bad. The corners are a little puffed out. And now there is the Y. There's a little bit of ghosting in that Y that you can see right here. Um, but not much, but again, it, it struggled to find the, where it wanted to put the seam. So the edges are a little bit more round than I would like them to be, but the layer height was just fine. And that's at a 0.2 layer height. And last but not least, we're going to talk about this big fat guy. We're going to zoom out so you can see the whole thing. He's quite big. Baby Yoda, baby Yoda. You will print more Baby Yodas! Don't sue me, Disney. I have spoken. Or in this case, Brian has spoken. So we did this head of Baby Yoda um, in their red PLA. And, you know, I used tree supports on this. I used um, my own settings for profile. Now I'll tell you the secret to the profile that I used. I didn't do any work but use the Ender 3 profile. That's all I did. And I set this little guy to uh, 0.16 layer height. And he came out beautifully. Like there's no flaws in him whatsoever. But there's that residue again. And I left the residue on there because I wanted to show you what I had to do to this machine. 
So we'll put that aside. Okay, so this is all the muck. Okay, it's not muck. It's actually glue stick. They have a build tack like surface on here. Great surface, but when your bed is not heated, and this is not a heated bed, as we flip it around, you can see there are no wires that come off the bed. This is the one big downfall for me on this particular printer because it does not have a heated bed. I had to use glue stick to get anything to print. I had several failed prints because they just came off of the build plate. Um, and we all know, I know how to level a machine. So uh, that was not the issue. So in this climate, we have a problem. It's quite cold up here. So without a heated bed on a 3D printer, especially if you're printing something that needs a heated bed like PLA, and that's what limits this machine is that it doesn't have a heated bed. So I had to use glue stick to get my prints to stick to the actual surface. I had several failed prints because it didn't work. Um, once I put glue stick on, it worked just fine. I do like the surface, but I really wish they would have added a heated bed to this. There is a spot on the board that connectors can be connected so that you can have a heated bed. But I think what they're limited to is because of the brick that they're using, it's like a laptop brick, same as you're going to find anywhere else, um, that it limits their ability to pull power properly to heat the bed. Now, I could be wrong about that. And if I am, I, I hope somebody's going to correct me down in the comments below. But because it is cold in here or cold up here, uh, I really needed to have something additional to, to grab those prints and hold it down. At a sub $200 printer, uh, which I think this is going to come in at for the US, um, and you're a beginner, I would give it, you know, a couple of hot ends. Well, actually, I'd probably give it about three and a half hot ends in total. Good things about it, a Titan like extruder, not a bad hot end. Their hot ends are usually pretty good. Good graphical interface here. Easy to slice your, your models with. Comes with an eight gigabyte card. All the tools and everything that you need like you'd find on any additional printer. They did send me a roll of red PLA. I wanna thank the fine folks over at Anycubic for sending this to me, but this is not a sponsored video, just so you guys know. I have to put that somewhere in my video so uh, I don't get demonetized. But with that said, um, at three and a half, I'm going to give it a three and a half out of uh, five ex or hot ends. And that's going to be our new rating here in 2020. So we're going to give everything a hot end rating. So it gets uh, three and a half hot ends out of five for me. Um, would I use this printer on a regular basis as an experienced 3D printing enthusiast? Probably not. Um, I may use it for some stuff. Um, am I going, do I think this is great for a beginner? Somebody just starting out that doesn't know anything about 3D printing? Yes, certainly I do because it is a PLA style machine. Question of the day. Do you think that a printer in 2020 should come with a heated bed regardless of its size? If you do and you, or you don't, go ahead and leave your comment and answer down in the comment section down below. Also like, subscribe and share this video with your friends. Uh, you never know, you might have somebody who's interested in 3D printing. Thanks to Spool 3D for this wonderful space that they give us each and every week so that we can bring you some great content on 3D printing. Now, this video up here, see, I got it right this time. Normally, I go the other way. This video up here is a primer for using Cura 4.1, which is not much different than 4.4. 4.5 is on the horizon, so be aware of that. You know we'll do a video on it when it comes out. Until next time, my friends, the first layer is always your foundation to a great print.